So uh, it, it organizer asked me to uh, talk about uh, minimal surfaces and uh, mean curvature flow and uh, uh, reaction diffusion equation, uh, phase interface, so forth. And so it's, um, and I, I have to make some choice about what to talk about. And uh, I uh, decided to talk about the mean curvature flow, uh, which is in, uh, the full setup is in the geometric mirror theory. Uh, the uh, mean coverage flow uh, due to uh, uh, Bracke uh, from the uh, 70s, uh, which have seen some uh, recent progress. Um, and also, uh, uh, the, so that's, that's what I'd like to talk first. Um, and the uh, second topic I'd like to talk is uh, the uh, diffuse interface uh, model, or uh, modica motor energy, uh, which, approx uh, which uh, Giovanni mentioned briefly today, but it's the one that approximates the surface uh, area. Uh, and in the limit, you end up having, say, minimal surface or mean coverage flow. Uh, and so these are the things I'd like to talk about. But to do all this, uh, I need uh, uh, the uh, notion of generalized surface uh, called bifold. And so uh, what I'd like to do today is uh, uh, to do a sort of a crash course on uh, bifold. Uh, and which may not be familiar at all uh, to many of you. So um, today, that's what I do. It's a very, actually quite, the uh, presentation is somewhat sketchy. Um, I just do a uh, bare minimum uh, amount of uh, notion, but I hope that uh, uh, this gives you a good um, preparation for what is going to follow. So um, today, uh, it's a preliminary. Okay. Uh, right. So the first uh, basic notation notation. Now, uh, so I just this some of the notation I use uh, throughout the talk. Uh, so let V R of X to be. Um, the open ball. Oh, by the way, yeah. First, uh, k and n are integer. Uh, k and integer. Okay. Um, now, uh, this is a ball of radius r uh, in R n, which is the um, oh, x minus y is less than r. And sometimes uh, when the when we uh, x is the origin, I, I may just write b r. Okay, and uh, just like uh, Giovanni's talk, I define this to be sub a script h of k to be a k-dimensional Hausdorff measure. In R n. And um, let's see, uh, for Radon measure, so Radon measure is the uh, Borel regular measure, which is locally finite. Borel, Borel regular. Locally finite. Uh, mu, uh, mu is often a uh, measure. Uh, let let um, support of mu be uh, just a support of mu. Just <laughs> so SPT of mu is support of mu, uh, which uh, I just give a definition uh, is a set of uh, Rn such that for any R, uh, uh, mu of Br x is bigger than zero. Okay, so that's the support, the usual uh, notion. I, I guess that's clearly written. Huh? And it's, it's very easy to check that this is a closed set. Okay, closed. And also some other notation I use often is that uh, uh, mu of for for any uh, function, 
continuous function with compact support, continuous function with compact support, uh, I, I write phi, oh sorry, mu of phi to be um, just a phi integrated with respect to mu. Just a short, shorthand for uh, expressing the integration of uh, phi with respect to mu or Rn. Uh, of course, the domain of the uh, definition of function can be sometimes uh, not a whole entire Rn, but some subset, say, open set. And also, uh, when I write uh, for, any, for, uh, for set, in, set in Rn, um, mu uh, restricted to m uh, is, is nothing, well, just by what I said, it's just a restriction of mu to uh, m for any set. Okay. So I think that's uh, at least something I need to know. Okay, now, uh, so, I, so this is really a crash course. I, I just define everything and just <laughs> do what I need to uh, uh, use later. So it's, it goes fairly quick. I'm sorry, but uh, so let, let G and K be, um, this, is a, uh, this is a space of uh, K dimensional subspace, subspace of spaces in Rn. So that's a usual, the Grassmannian, k-dimensional Grassmannian, uh, and of which I also identify it with the um, space of n by n matrices. Okay, so uh, when, it, when you're given a k-dimensional subspace in Rn, I identify that with a space of n by n matrices, which uh, represent the orthogonal projection to the subspace, which is representing the um, orthogonal projection. to the subspace. Okay. So the one that you, you have in mind is the uh, co-dimension one case. Um, so uh, for example, uh, in G of n, n minus one, so that's a co-dimension one uh, subspace. Uh, you can think this, okay, so if you have a subspace, co-dimension subspace in Rn, uh, you have a, a unit normal, which is orthogonal to this subspace. There's only, well, uh, two unit vector, which is orthogonal uh, to this, uh, let's call this mu, nu. Okay, so nu is, uh, uh, nu is the uh, normal unit normal. Then um, obviously uh, whenever you have an n minus one dimensional subspace, uh, you can identify the subspace with this unit normal with this uh, possibility of having plus and minus sign. So um, now uh, I can identify this, uh, sorry, so identify this with the, um, so these are unit lengths. So, uh, the uh, n minus one dimensional sphere with the identification of plus minus one. Okay. So, uh, well, this is like n minus one dimensional project, real projective space. So you can think this as this. Okay. And uh, this identification is, uh, in this case, is uh, you can think this, um, let's say this is S. I can identify S with the, um, the projection to this n minus n dimensional space, which is, you can think this as uh, identity matrix, n by n ma identity matrix, minus nu tensor nu, okay? 
So uh, new tensor nu, uh, uh, this, I, this ij uh, component of this is uh, uh, Kronecker delta minus nu i nu j. Okay. You can easily check that this represents a projection to this, to this n minus 1 dimension subspace. So uh, that's a kind of identification I'm thinking. Okay. So given n minus 1 dimension subspace, uh, I identify that with this n by n matrix. Okay. And that's one to one correspondence. And also, I should mention that this, this is a symmetric matrix. Okay. That's very, well, this, you can see that this, that's symmetric matrix, of course. Uh, but in general, that's, that's the case for any dimension. Um, and also, I, I want to uh, introduce the, uh, this uh, formula for given uh, A and B in uh, this uh, G of NK, uh, I, I want to uh, define A dot B to be a trace of A multiplied B. Okay. So that's um, something that I, I want to use quite often later. Uh, in a, if I use the uh, component expression, that's just Aij times, well, since it's symmetric, it's, it's uh, I don't have to take the transpose uh, aij, ij going from 1 to n. Okay. So uh, this is a notation I want to use throughout my talk. OK, so next uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, so-called countably rectifiable set. Uh, rectifiable set. So this is a uh, uh, generalization of a C1 uh, manifold. Uh, so le le uh, let me give you a definition. Definition. A subset. M. So this is just a subset, no um, extra things, just subset in Rn. Uh, this is called um, accountably uh, k rectifiable. So I'm giving definition of this part, countably rectifiable. If uh, there exists a sequence of there exists a sequence of um, embedded, nice embedded uh, C1 uh, submanifold. C1 k dimensional submanifold. Right, l let me just say surfaces, uh, even though it's uh, k dimensional. Uh, M1, M2, and so forth. Okay, they could be empty set, but at least I, I, I allow them to be uh, countably many of them, such that uh, H k-dimensional measure uh, m minus the union of this C1 manifold is equal to 0. Okay. So that's the definition of a countably uh, k-rectifiable set. So um, I hope this at least uh, is clear. So. Um, this really tells you that there exists a countable many, uh, well, maybe even one is OK, but anyway, the countably many uh, C1 k-dimensional surfaces such that M is almost everywhere included in this union of this C1 manifold. Okay. Um, now, example of um, 
this, well, I, I think uh, some of you may have seen this for the first time. And uh, in that case, please just think the, this set as, for example, you can just think, well, first example is actually k-dimensional C1 manifold, of course, C1 uh, surface. Okay. That's, of course, because you can take M1 to be M, if you like. And of course, also, countably, many of that. C1, k-dimensional surfaces. Of course, that's, oh, again, you know, you just take m1, m2, m3, so forth, as uh, your m, that's fine. And also notice that any subset of such is also, because as long as you cover it, you know, you're okay. So any subset of such Now, um, the kind of things that you should have in mind is, for example, in case of one, one dimension, you might think about, say, network, for example, something like that is another example. Okay. So I, I like to deal with the uh, surfaces with singularity, and that's why we, we need this kind of notion. And also in uh, dimension two, you can think of, say, soap bubble clusters that you can see in a bathroom, or not bathroom, but bathtub, sorry. Uh, that's, that's another example of uh, such things because you can cover these things by C1 surfaces, countably many of them. It can be much, much worse than this, but you know, um, uh, it can be bad, which uh, I don't want to go into too much. Okay, um, now proposition about this. Uh, that's, uh, suppose, suppose M is, as I uh, just described, uh, M in Rn is not just um, uh, countably, kept, uh, countably <laughs> K rectifiable, But also, uh, a bit more additionally, a uh, property that I assume, HK measurable, or if you like, it can be Borel measurable. Uh, there is nothing you lose too much. And also a locally finite uh, HK uh, locally finite measure. Uh, which means that any uh, compact set, um, let's see, HK of K with M is finite. Okay. So that's assumption. I am assuming that this M, M is, uh, is in this uh, in this class where you can cover it by C1 K-dimensional surfaces. Then um, the, the following is true. Then for, for HK almost everywhere, everywhere um, X in M, there exists a unique, well, with a quotation, tangent space k-dimensional tangent space. <coughs> I guess this, this doesn't, uh, <laughs> I can't change the order of these things, I guess, so let's see. Uh, so there exists a uh, tangent space called approximate tangent space. So uh, this uh, almost everywhere x, there exists a unique k-dimensional tangent space 
uh, called uh, approximate tangent space. which is denoted by uh, Txm. OK, so that's the statement. So um, well, um, for example, if you see this picture, for example, which has singularity uh, here and here, uh, the point is, well, you may have a singularity, but these guys are not generic points. But the generic point, such as these point, well, you have a tangent space. Okay? And um, in general, the, the, this, this, this proposition's claim is exactly that, that a generic point, you can define a notion of a tangent space. But only, uh, so this is a tangent space with respect, sort of major theoretic tangent space. Okay, um, now uh, this, I think, uh, I don't have time to uh, discuss too much about this, uh, but I, 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 I'm hoping that uh, if you think about, uh, say, this category, for example, say you have, say, a countably, countable union of C1 uh, k-dimensional surfaces, you can kind of imagine that the uh, singularity has a small dimension, and outside of this singularity, generic points, you have a usual tangent space. Well, this is um, if that's the case. But in general, you can also uh, uh, define the uh, unique tangent space. So uh, here, I, I just take it as uh, something that I hope you can believe this. Okay? And I suppose that Giovanni will discuss a bit more about this, I suppose. So I, I'll just leave it to <laughs> Giovanni. <laughs> We discussed a little bit about this. OK, so um, I just uh, mentioned quickly that the uh, correspondence of m, uh, this uh, x2, uh, this approximate tangent space is, um, is, the, um, is actually, uh, this correspondence is actually, uh, you, can, uh, you can say that this is actually, this correspondence is, is a hk measurable function. Okay. So you can integrate. Uh, this uh, tangent space with respect to HK measure. OK, um, now uh, I quickly go into the, the discussion of the varifold. So, varifold is a very nice object uh, which is. Uh, defined by uh, Algren in, I think, the uh, 60s. And um, this, this is something that I really need to um, define that, uh, this um, uh, mean curvature flow. So 1.3 varifold. Uh, the reference for this varifold is, uh, say, uh, there's a famous paper by Allard. Uh, which I did, probably didn't list in my uh, references. But also, uh, there's a very nice book by Leon Simon, Introduction to Geometric Method Theory. So um, let U be an uh, open set. And uh, I define this uh, cross the product space, GK of U, to be um, U cross this Grassmannian. Okay, so GK, G, GKU is the U cross G. So any, any point in this is a point X cross a S, say. Okay. And I put the, U, the product topology on this. And now a uh, definition of bifold. Now, I, I write the definition, which is very um, abstract, I would say. <laughs> but very quickly, you see example, OK? <laughs> so don't worry too much. Uh, general um, 
Okay, bifold. Okay, so the K bifold is, uh, let's say, v, v on U is a Rado measure. Uh, on this product space. And also the set of all uh, varifold, I just define it by the set of uh, all um, k varifold. Uh, uh, on u uh, is uh, denoted by Let's see, I, I think this mean this is supposed to be a bold face. Okay. So this is if you've seen this for the first time, I think this looks very uh, kind of strange. Okay. <laughs> this probably doesn't make any sense. But the only example I hope you have in mind with this is the following. Okay? So this is very strange. So example, so example is, just please remember this example. Okay, so uh, let M be, uh, let M be, um, be a C1 K dimensional surface, okay, just a nice, C, say, well, C1 k-dimensional surface. Now, uh, claim, I claim that this C1 surface induces a varifold, one varifold, okay, so M induced naturally uh, k varifold denoted by Uh, let's see, I think there are some options about this notation, but l let me write this way, uh, denoted by m bar as follows. Uh, maybe I, I end the claim here. So given a k-dimensional C1 surface, it induces one radon measure on this space. Okay, so that's a claim. So how does that happen? Uh, now, wh what is a Radon measure? Radon measure is, uh, is so Radon measure on G, K, U uh, is the one that, uh, um, let's see, uh, if you are given a continuous function, which is compactly supported continuous function on this space, okay, Given any uh, given a continuous function on this space, uh, what Radon measure does is it, through integration it produces one scalar value. I mean one value. Okay, so uh, so you can think that Radon measure is a dual space element of dual space of this. Okay? So um, what I need to do is I just uh, I just need to assign some number. Uh, in a way that's bounded, okay? It's, I, I just need to define a, a linear, bounded linear functional on this space. That gives you Radon measure by, by uh, what was it? representation theorem. No, so what do you do? So you remember that phi is a function defined on this space, not, not on you, but you cross, uh, so you cross uh, this guy, okay? So it takes a two, x and this, uh, this two variable, okay, x and this variable. So um, what, I, what I do here is that given a continuous function, what I do is I, I, define, I, I define this the following integration. Now I, I substitute x 
here I need to substitute some k dimensional subspace, but the natural thing to do is you substitute the uh, tangent space at that point. Then integrate. Okay? So I kind of def I define it this as as this. You know, this gives you a number, right? Given a continuous function, taking the variable here for x, just x. For this this Grassmannian, you just stick in tangent space at that point. Okay, then you integrate. Now this is a linear correspondence, of course, right? Because well, if you have two phi one and phi two, it's linear, of course. It's bounded also, so it does define a Radon measure. Okay, so this this gives you a very nice Radon measure. Okay. So um, this is example uh, of um, the most important example, I would say. And now notice that um, it doesn't have to be C1. Actually, this C1 can be replaced by countably k rectifiable. Uh, I guess a measurable, also measurable, countably k rectifiable with locally finite measure. Okay. So uh, the one that I, I, uh, I raised already, but the one that you just saw in the proposition. Because you see, for almost everywhere, you have a unique notion of tangent space. So you can stick, you can stick in this guy. You see, you, you can just use a ta your approximate tangent space, which is uniquely defi defined almost everywhere. And also you can integrate, too. Okay? So, um, so I could have started out with saying that, well, let M be a country k rectifiable set, which is measurable, locally finite measure. Okay? You define your um, M bar like this, and, you, and that gives you a Radon measure. Okay, so this, this is a nice, uh, so this, this gives you a uh, k varifold. Okay? One, one example of k varifold. And this is the most important example, in fact. Okay, let's see. <laughs> This is somewhat unpleasant. <laughs> I have to keep erasing this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this side somehow. What did you do, Giovanni? I don't know. Like <laughs> 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 what? But this back one doesn't go up, right? Yeah, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, OK, I'll just keep erasing this. <laughs> OK, so um, now uh, I, I hope this made some sense. And um, right, and uh, so you see, even though I said k varifold, you probably can think only this, this example. That's, that's good enough, OK? Because that's what I like to um, use more or less. OK, now uh, for the um, definition, uh, for, for general k varifold, B, uh, let's see you. Uh, there is a notion called a weight measure. So called weight measure. Uh, let's see. Which I write like this one, B double bar, which is a measure. Not not on G K U, but on U. Uh, defined uh, by uh, the following that. Um, so again, it's a it's a measure. Uh, it's a it's a measure on U. So um, what I do is, uh, well, given any uh, continuous function with compact support on U. Okay, um, I define this this guy as a phi x of, this is a definition, okay, to be just the, in, in, in the um, uh, let's see, this is just a m of, oh, sorry, let's see, 
uh, this I just define it to be uh, just a phi of x of pv xs, where um, you are integrating over the whole space. Okay. So originally, um, we took the uh, you know continuous function defined on GKU, but this weight measure, this weight measure is the one that you basically uh, drop the uh, tangent space. Okay. So uh, maybe, okay, maybe I should say that for any, okay, maybe in other words, for any uh, subset of U, uh, this weight measure is the one that um, is nothing but just a V of A cross the, the, the uh, Grassmannian, okay? G and K. So basically, uh, you just, uh, you know, uh, f basically forget about this, uh, this uh, Grassmannian part, more or less. And um, now, why we have, s uh, and also this is called mass, also sometimes called mass. Now, for this, uh, for the, uh, for this most important example, uh, what is this uh, weight measure? Okay, for this example, uh, actually, for the um, for this guy M, just like the one that I just defined here. Uh, notice that um, this weight measure. Of this m of x. Now, uh, if you just follow the definition, uh, this is nothing but let's see. Uh, so this is um, just uh, as I said. This is just a gk. Um, so maybe I should write this as u cross. G and K of uh, phi x of d m of x, uh, which is this one. Okay, the same thing. Um, but uh, this is what this is nothing but just the uh, integration of phi over m. Okay, so um, for this uh, uh, for this for this bifold, the weight measure is nothing but just uh, this weight measure of m is nothing but uh, this k-dimensional house of measure restricted to m. Okay, so it's it, 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 well, so the weight measure is nothing but just restriction. Of house of measure on this set uh, M, okay. So in some sense, uh, this uh, this this weight measure is really nothing but just the area of M. Okay. So it's all uh, mostly uh, definition, but uh, and also uh, I, I also define the. Um, this uh, v weight measure o over the whole u is uh, I call this as total total mass. Which is nothing in, in the in this case is nothing but um, h k of m. Okay? If V is just this case. It's just a k dimensional area of this uh, M. Okay, so a few more definitions. Um, a k bifold is uh, called 
uh, rectifiable. OK, so k varifold is very general object. But when I say uh, 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 k varifold is uh, rectifiable, uh, if, if they exist, um, if they exist uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, counter-v k rectifiable set, if they exist um, HK measurable uh, count of a rectifiable set, K rectifiable set, M, and also um, uh, HK measurable. Uh, locally HK integrable um, function um, theta, which is the final M, and taking the positive value such that Um, this varifold uh, is represented as follows. Um, so uh, phi of uh, so for any uh, phi which is a compactly supported continuous function on GK of U, uh, this varifold is uh, just an integration integration over M with um, this weight theta. Okay, so um, this is uh, defined as so such that uh, this integration of phi over this uh, set, dvxs. So this is given by the following, that you integrate over m phi of x. Now, this is an approximate tangent space with weight theta and k-dimensional integration. Okay. Where uh, this, as I said in my words, this is approximate tangent space, which which exists almost everywhere. Okay, so whenever uh, k dimensional varifold k varifold is represented in this way, I say it's rectifiable. Okay. So you know uh, this is uh, example you just saw at the beginning as the most important example. Only difference here is just you have this weight function, theta, okay, which is non-negative in general. So it's a bit more general than the most in important example you saw. But you know, it's almost the same, except that you have this theta. And a theta is called so-called multiplicity function. Theta is multiplicity. You see, this multiplicity function gives you some kind of freedom about the, the so somehow density of this uh, um, in this uh, uh, surface. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it could be say Borel measurable, for example. Yeah. Or. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't uh, very much, but. Just because I, uh, it's the most sort of uh, easy way to visualize it somehow. So that's, that's why I'm using this continuous function. But it could be Borel measurable function, or I guess it can be HK measurable function if you like. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so you see uh, this is uh, rectifiable. 
And um, let's see. Uh, now the uh, PS4. Ah, good. And also, just more notation. The set of um, the set of uh, all all rectifiable all uh, uh, rectifiable uh, k manifold uh, is uh, written as R k R v k of u. Okay. That's sort of a uh, notation used by Allard. Rectifiable bifold. Yep. Fine. Um, finally, um, okay, so if in addition, theta of x is actually integer valued. Uh, HK almost everywhere, almost everywhere on M. Uh, v is then, V is called integral uh, uh, integral, um, well, I guess integral, K, uh, integral K variable. Not only that theta is no negative value, but integer. So it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Almost everywhere. Not everywhere, but almost everywhere. I say it's integral. Okay. And this, the, uh, this uh, uh, class of uh, rec uh, variable I, I denoted by I, V, K of U. Okay. So integral variable, okay. I, V. And finally, uh, uh, the uh, if just final definition if uh, k variable uh, k variable v is called uh, unit density uh, if v is um, this integral variable with theta equal to 1. Okay. So I say it's a unit density if this multiplicity function is just 1. Okay. So that actually is the one that I told you is the most important example okay, where the variable is nothing but just the one with this one. Okay. And uh, in, <coughs> yes? Oh. Yes? So um, I, I, haven't, I have never seen this variable, but um, this, so when we talk about minimal surface, the mm -hmm. problem is maybe so we minimize certain energy in this uh, general variable. And then we try to show exactly this unit density. Is that? Unit what density? Well, yes, actually, yes, that could be, that can be said, in fact, yes, for some case. Yeah, I mean, uh, the first, first speaker talked about the existence of uh, minimal surface. Right. Point, yes, right, exactly. Actually, you will see, I think you, you'll talk about this, right? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, what he's going to talk about is, is going to correspond to also varifold, but it, you see, uh, it's, an, well, okay, so you'll explain it. <laughs> but yes, it's related. And uh, it's actually uh, end up being the same thing at s in some case. Yes, I'm right. I'm just wondering if this is one, one way to uh, try, to, uh, try to show the existence. Well, not the way to show the existence usually. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when you try to show the regularity, for example, this is a framework that you want to work, in fact. Yes. OK, so as I said, the, the most example is this unit density variable, like that. And uh, OK, I got more time. Um, right, OK. 
So well, this is uh, if I so this this I, I also can express it um, that uh, if it's a unit density, then uh, the varifold is just uh, so this means this means that the varifold is just m bar, okay, where m is uh, uh, HK measurable, uh, count weak rectifiable, and so forth. Now, um, OK, so next, uh, 1.4 is the first variation. Variation of um, varifold. So just as uh, today's uh, first talk, um, I just do a uh, variation of uh, area, okay, or mass in this case. So let phi T be a deformorphism. It's exactly the same as uh, what was discussed before. This is deformorphism, uh, where T varies, say, between minus epsilon and epsilon, some positive. The phi T is a deformorphism from U to U. And uh, which is identity at t equal to zero. X is just identity map. Okay, when t equal to zero, identity map on U. And also um, outside of some compact set, outside some compact set, uh, phi t is identity. U minus k is just identity map of u minus k. So phi t changes only within k. And um, so the initial, uh, so the velocity uh, is, uh, is a vector field, uh, let's say g. OK, so this. Uh, Initial velocity at t equal to zero uh, is, uh, say, let's say this is g of x, uh, which is a vector field. Uh, let's say smooth vector field. Well, c1 is enough, so maybe I just say c1 is a vector field. Uh, so I, I, let me write this way. So g is a vector field, which represents the initial sort of velocity. <coughs> So uh, Giovanni computed this exactly the things that I like to um, uh, mention. That uh, let m be, um, uh, let's say m be a C1 k-dimensional surface. Actually, uh, you will see that this is, well, as he mentioned also, this is good enough to be uh, countably k-rectifiable, in fact. But let's say C1 k-dimensional manifold surface. U. Then uh, what I like to compute is the change of uh, area of this M under this map. Okay. Now I want to compute this, the rate of change as you vary under this uh, diffeomorphism. Okay. And as Giovanni, uh, by the way, yeah, so maybe I should restrict it to, uh, to this set k. Sorry. Outside of k, nothing is happening, so it doesn't matter. Now, this computation, as Giovanni has done it today, comes out to be uh, this divergence okay, over m. But divergence with respect to the um, tangent space of m. So let me write this as divergence of m, of g. OK, like this. So this you can do by using the area formula, as you saw uh, today, uh, just to compute the uh, use, use the area formula and then differentiate. And you get this exactly the same thing. And as, as he mentioned also, that this doesn't have to be C1 surface, but actually 
it's it's good only on, uh, even f even for the um, country k rectifiable set because it's it, as long as it's within the C1 submanifold, the same computation works. Okay. Uh, now um, this uh, this is uh, uh, something that uh, motivates the. Um, Definition of the first variation of the variable, general variable. Oh, by the way, so maybe I should also mention that divergence of uh, m of g of x. Um, this you can interpret uh, as follows: that uh, if you think T x m, which is a k-dimensional subspace, as um, this, if you think this as an element of g and k which is true, right, because it's a k-dimensional subspace. And identifying it with the uh, n by n matrix, matrix representing the orthogonal projection to it. Okay, so I can think this as a matrix, ij, representing the, to the orthogonal projection to this you know, subspace. Then uh, if you think about what this is, this is actually uh, as follows. This is nothing but taking. So thinking Tx of m as a matrix projection to this matrix to this subspace, so this is an n by n matrix. You multiply this with the uh, uh, G. This is also n by n matrix. This is n by n. So that's the product of the you know n by n matrices with n by n matrices. And if you take a trace of it, it's actually Precisely equal to divergence of G. It's it's actually you, you take a uh, uh, you, if you take a orthonormal basis of this k-dimensional sub subspace and if you think about it, this this actually is true, okay. And uh, which is um, okay. Maybe I'll just keep like this, right? So um, so I can write this if I want to. Um, I mean the same thing, m of um, trace of Txm and g of x, okay? If I want, that's the same, exactly the same thing. Now, um, now the point is. Um, I want to define a uh, first notion of first variation for general k-dimensional barifold in a natural way, so that the definition reduces the same formula in a special case where m is like that. Okay, so I want to have that notion, general notion, uh, for uh, k-barifold. So. Um, Okay, uh, maybe I'll just do a few, one more thing. So, um, mod so this is a motivation to define the first variation of um, for varifold. So I just define. So uh, for for general varifold for V. Um, you see, um, um, let's see. Um, okay, let's see. So um, this, this is the first variation. Now, um, so um, I, I want to define, uh, given the, uh, given a vector field, C1 compactly supported vector field, uh, the first variation OK, so that's a new thing that I'm defining. The first variation of B with respect to G, uh, I just define it um, like this. That is, so that's a notation for this first variation. OK, so that's a. That's uh, this. Is, this I, I kind of my image of this is this is the uh, okay. So that that's uh, left hand side. I define it this quantity to be the following. So uh, I define this 
this is gk of u. So uh, the um, domain of integration of the manifold. Now I say trace of S. Now this is a matrix product of Navra of G of X. And then uh, integrate okay? X S. So that's the definition of this left hand side. Okay? I define this quantity by this right hand side. OK, now uh, why is this um, good? Well, um, OK, so you know, that's the definition, as I just defined. Now let's check that if V, if v comes out to be this uh, C1 k-dimensional uh, surface, then um, OK, now, naturally, uh, if m is, no, if v is, uh, comes from m, I, you see, it, it's this situation. So uh, the first variation, I want it to be this, naturally, because that, that's uh, how why we motivated. Uh, but in fact, um, notice that, uh, this uh, GKU of a trace of S composed with number G of X of DM of XS. OK, so wh wh what was the definition of this barifold M? What it does, you know, what it does is you, you see when, when I write like this, what, I, what it does is I just, x is integration over m, OK? Now, at s, what you do is you stick in your tangent space. That's, that's a rule of this variable, right? So that's, what you have is tx of m composed with number g of x. And they integrate. That's all. By definition of this variable. Okay? I mean, the, that's a, just a rule that whenever you integrate with respect to this guy, all you do is you just put x integrate over m. For tangent space, you just stick in your tangent space. Okay? So that's, that's it. That's by definition. But this is precisely, of course, as you can see, is equal to this one. Right? So in this very special case, you end up having the same thing. So by this observation, you, you, you define your first variation of bifold as this. Okay? So uh, in fact, uh, to, to do the truth, actually, there is a notion of push forward of bifold, so-called. And uh, you can actually compute the first variation by doing that. But I just want to skip that part. So I just define the first variation as this. For, for people who knows about this. OK, so let's take a break, five minutes break. Let me start again. Um, I forgot one thing uh, when I defined this uh, quantity, first variation for uh, varifold. Um, notice that um, for general varifold, uh, this quantity is this, this guy. You see, if you think this as a function on this space, GKU, notice that this function is a continuous function. That's very, actually a very important point. You see, G is a C1, so with respect to x, this is continuous. You know, this is C1, so the differentiation, after differentiation, that's continuous function. Now, this S is also, um, it, the S is just uh, a variable. So with respect to this variable, if you think this as a function, it's a continuous function. Okay? So you can integrate this. That's actually important, that notice, noticing that this is an integrable, nice continuous function with compact support. Okay? So uh, that's why you can define it on, for general varifold. Okay? So that's something I, I forgot to mention. Now, um, 
so the next things I'd like to do is uh, to define um, the uh, notion of a mean curvature vector for a uh, varifold. So um, let's see. So um, now definition is, um, let's see, just a moment. Oh yeah, I, I kind of forgot about this. Um, so I should mention that uh, before I do that, um, I should mention that uh, for if m is a uh, if m is C two manifold, C two k-dimensional surface without boundary boundary. Okay, um, in U. Okay, so uh, suppose that you have uh, some surface, M. It's which is C2. Now, uh, so this, this uh, first variation, which we uh, <coughs> saw, uh, G of X, HK of X. Uh, now, so uh, Giovanni also uh, did this, uh, but. Uh, this uh, you can do some sort of kind of integration by parts, I would say, uh, and you can in general it, this comes out to be equal to uh, uh, this uh, uh, g x dot h of x. Uh, well, let's say maybe we subscript m the h k of x, where h is a mean curvature vector. This is a mean curvature vector. So uh, a, a little bit of difference from uh, Giovanni's uh, definition of mean curvature was, in, in my course, I, I always defined a mean curvature as a, as a vector. So uh, it's the usual mean curvature times the unit normal. In co-dimension one case, it's actually you have only one unit normal, but in a higher co-dimension case, it's, you have to think a little bit. But you can define this uh, notion and uh, satisfy this. Okay. So I, I take it as a known also. I don't compute this. Uh, so this is true for C2 surface in general. Okay. So, uh, so this is a motivation to define mean coverage vector for varifold. You see, we have the formula for the le right hand, uh, left hand side now. Now, um, this involves the differentiation of G. Right hand side doesn't dif involve differentiation of G. Okay, so this more like integration by parts formula. So a natural thing to do next for varifold is the following. So again, I, I need to uh, do mo more definition. Uh, so definition. So for V, for general varifold, uh, the first variation first variation uh, del V is, is said to be uh, is, uh, is called a locally bounded. If the following is true, if if for any um, uh, compactly uh, included set u tilde, okay, for any u tilde, there exists a constant depending on u tilde, okay, finite number such that. Okay, so the following is true, such that this uh, first variation that I define uh, this, uh, with respect to G, which I, I defined before, is bounded by constant, this constant, times su supremum of G, uh, where X is um, in U tilde. 
for any G uh, vector field, C1 compact vector field, with a compact support on U tilde. Okay. So I, I say that uh, the uh, this first variation is locally bounded. If <coughs> any uh, uh, compactly included the sub, uh, open set U, the existing number C, such that this uh, this uh, first variation has this property. Okay, for any C1 compact. Um, now, so notice that then, uh, if this is true, okay, so this may not be true sometime, but if it is true, then uh, note that the, um, this uh, right-hand side does not involve any derivative of G, okay? Doesn't involve any derivative of G. So you can extend the definition of this first variation to continuous function by the usual density argument, okay? Uh, that is, uh, so now, if this is true, then this first variation can be defined by, for G, for, uh, now it's not C1, but actually continuous function, by uh, density argument. That is, you know, whenever you have a continuous function, you can always approximate by C1 function, you know, by doing um, modifying, so forth. And you can take a limit, and you can define by, because of this, pro this, uh, this property. And also, of course, uh, this is linear functional. So you can define uh, for, con for continuous G, right? You can extend it. So, uh, so now the, this, this, so this, this guy is a now a, is a linear functional bounded, okay, bound, locally bounded, bounded linear functional on this continuous function on this C compact um, U tilde Rn, okay. It's, it's now defined for continuous function. And so by re-representation theorem, this gives you a measure. Okay? Whenever you have a uh, continuous linear function on continuous function, you have a uh, radon measure. Okay? Uh, but in this case, it's a vector valued signed radon measure. Okay? So uh, by re uh, the this guy is now is a, is a vector valued Sign measure, radon measure, okay, or any regular measure. So uh, if you have this local boundedness, then you have this natural object, which is a measure. And uh, but you see, if you look at, you see, um, for a nice C two case, you know, this was a first variation of this. Uh, M with respect to G. You see, if M is C2, for example, if this is, if, if M is C2, then in fact this quantity will end up being equal to this, and this is obviously bounded by soup of G, right? Because you can just take, well, assuming that this is nice function. So, um, naturally, um, you see, um, Okay, so this right-hand side has something to do with that um, measure. Okay, uh, so uh, so what I do next is, um, uh, and also I guess uh, in this case, I uh, define the this uh, total variation. Right. Okay. So let's see. Also, uh, just a definition is uh, this. I also in this case. I also define this total variation of the first variation is a, a total variation is the one that uh, defined by um, let's say uh, let's say u tilde to be uh, defined as a, a supremum of 
let's see, G C1 compact with U tilde Rn, and also uh, G is less than or equal to 1 of the first variation of G. Okay. Now, uh, the right hand side is bounded by the assumption, and um, I take the supremum and I, I call this as a total variation of this first variation. Okay. Right. Um, so it's a lot of uh, jargon. But uh, now, uh, next, I like to, what I like to do is uh, defining the notion of mean curvature vector for the first variation, uh, for the varifold. So, um, so let, let's uh, give a definition. So definition. Uh, suppose that um, B has a, a locally bounded first variation. Okay, and um, And in addition, assume that um, this, uh, you see, now, as I said, it's a Radon measure, signed Radon measure, well, vector valued. Assume that this guy is absolutely continuous with respect to the weight measure okay, of V. Okay? So this is uh, absolutely continuous uh, with respect to V. So I'll explain the motivation of why you end up having this. But I assume that this is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to this weight measure V. Uh, the radon nicotine derivative uh, nicotine derivative. Now, um, by the way, if, if this is the case, um, well, actually, um, I first should say that total variation is, uh, is absolutely constant. Maybe this is more pr pr appropriate. It's, it's, it's the same thing, uh, roughly. Uh, so maybe, maybe I should have said that. The, this total variation is, is, is absolutely continuous. It's probably more correct way of saying it. Um, then uh, the radon nicotin derivative uh, of this guy, uh, which I, I write that okay this this way, which I denoted is as H, is uh, called uh, the uh, generalized mean curvature vector. Of B. Okay. So uh, if if this first variation is absolutely continuous with respect to the weight measure by radon nicotine theorem, there is this uh, you know derivative because if, if uh, whenever you have absolutely continuous measure, you have a this radon nicotine derivative, and I I I call this as a generalized uh, mean curvature vector of B. Now why we have this? Okay. So let me explain with the most Im important example, as, as we have been seeing. So suppose that V is, um, comes from M, okay, which is C2, say. Okay, so the motivation of doing this suppose that V, as I said, V is, uh, comes from M. Okay? Say, suppose that M is, say, C2. Then, um, as we saw, the first variation is, is nothing but just m divergence okay, of GHK. As we discussed, that, that was the way we motivated this first variation. And we know if it's C2, this is equal to minus of h dot g. This is 
you know, as I just explained, that in case of C2, you can do integration of parts. Now, notice that um, now then this is, in fact, well, and also maybe I should point out that the um, weight measure of this V, weight measure is nothing but just a measure restricted to M. Okay, so this, this is, um, is nothing but measure restricted to M. As we said, you know, we kind of defined this way. So um, now, in this case, notice that um, the first variation is, first of all, bounded. Okay, that's okay. Maybe I should check this too. Okay, so now first, uh, in this case, the first variation is bounded because of not not that. Uh, this is, okay, maybe I should, this is uh, locally bounded, <coughs> bounded since uh, this, this guy is, as I said, is that's a minus of h dot g. Okay, and then this is of course uh, less than equal to. Um, you see, um, this is m times h as a value times the supremum of g. Okay, that's that's easy to check, right? Of course, that's by just uh, taking uh, taking a soup of g outside. That's fine. So actually, it's bounded as as I just defined uh, in the way. I define locally boundedness of the first variation, okay? And also, um, also how about the absolute continuity? Now, uh, well, it's actually also the case because uh, if if you have a set A um, in U such that you know um, a, the um, weight measure in this case weight measure is nothing but H K restricted to M, if if this, this measure is zero, then uh, obviously you can see that uh, the, um, this first variation measure, well, I, I maybe it does take some, uh, a, a little bit of proof, but uh, you can kind of imagine that if this A has a measure zero on M, well, you know, check this. On, if you restrict it to A, you know, it's just a major zero set, so you know integral is going to be zero. Right? Uh, so uh, that's uh, so this this set. Well, uh, in fact, that uh, you have to kind of look at the f the characteristic function, okay, of uh, a. Uh, now, so that's really uh, it, this is this is nothing but minus h uh, dot. Well, h. Okay, so it has to be vector field, I guess. <laughs> so it's a little bit complicated, but uh, let's see. Okay, so maybe you can even look at the total. Vari well, let's see. Maybe I'll just uh, uh, just well just pick some some vector e e j or something. Okay, uh, then um, e j uh, m intersected with a of d h k of x. That's that's the, um, uh, uh, but since a is major zero, that this this is going to be zero. Okay, so uh, in that sense, it's actually uh, absolutely continuous. Okay, with respect to weight measure, uh, weight measure for this case is nothing but this this guy. Okay, so whenever you have major zero, it's zero. Okay, now what is the radon nicotin derivative in this case? You see, a random nicotin derivative in this case is um, well this guy, but um, notice that first variation of g, as I said, is minus of h dot g. Now uh, this, uh, you see, uh, this this is. Uh, you can actually think this as a restrict, restricted measure, of course, to M. 
Okay, like that. Then uh, you see um, the uh, Radon Nicodem derivative, this guy, correspond precisely actually H, in fact, in this case, because you see uh, you, you're differentiating this by this measure, taking a minus sign and actually end up being H. Okay. So um, this uh, sort of abstract radon Nicodem derivative is not in, in a very nice case it's just a mean curvature vector. Okay. So it's a little bit abstract, I, I think maybe for the first time you've seen it, it looks kind of abstract. But um, my uh, point is that uh, whenever you have this abs absolute continuity, you have this quantity, which you can think as a generalized mean coverage vector. Okay, so um, now, uh, so from the definition, you see, from the definition of this, what we have is, so by definition, so that, that's all I need to know. By definition, whenever we have this absolute continuity, the point is whenever we have a C1 compactly supported um, vector field, okay, whenever you have that, the first variation of G, okay, which we have definition, is by definition is equal to minus um, H dot G of D d of x by definition because that's that's how we define this quantity okay because you see uh, it's it's just uh, by definition this is equal to since this is a radonical derivative this is equal to uh, g dot d well first variation of x in some sense okay by, by definition you see because this is equal to uh, precisely, uh, you know, minus h of b. Okay. Roughly, I mean, it's not quite the right notation, I suppose, but the uh, idea is like that. So the point is, whenever we have this absolute continuity, uh, this formula ho holds. That's, that's all we need to actually use, okay? So a uh, little bit abstract, but I hope that this, this is sort of okay. So, um, uh, so the we have this formula, and H is integrable with respect to this weight measure. Okay, so that's the definition of this generalized uh, mean curvature vector. Right, um, right, okay. Good, so um, now finally, uh, we have this I uh, have this notion of uh, mean coverage vector, so naturally we can define the general notion of minimal surface too. Okay, so it's a weird stuff. Um, oh, it looks so abstract, maybe if <laughs> you've seen it for the first time. But um, for if if um, for any vector field. Uh, if the first variation is equal to zero, we say that V is um, stationary. Uh, v is called stationary. Very full. Okay. Or maybe you might say minimal surface in a generalized sense. Okay. Or minimal surface. Okay, maybe I should say um, bit because you see, um, well, um, now if it's zero, obviously it's bounded. Of course, it's zero. It's bounded. And also absolutely continuous because it's zero. So you have a generalized mean coverage vector, right? The, the way I just defined. So maybe uh, as a remark, well, um, a trivial remark, but um, so as I said, that if 
b is equal to 0, then uh, uh, it's bound, is, is bounded absolutely continuous continuous so um, there exists a, a generalized mean causal vector satisfying um, with um, with uh, this first variation of g is equal to minus h dot g dv xs oh sorry dv this is not d of x okay but this is zero okay for any g Well, C1 compactly supported. But then, uh, by the usual argument, you can argue that H has to be 0. Okay, for any G, this is 0, then H has to be 0. So this means that the generalized mean coverage vector is 0. And naturally, that leads you to the definition of this stationality of the varifold. Okay? So uh, from this, as I said, by words, uh, H has to be equal to 0. Um, uh, almost everywhere, B almost everywhere. Um, and so B is kind of uh, minimal. Okay. In a generalized sense. <coughs> okay. Um, right. Um, now let's see. Uh, and uh, maybe I, I should hear us. Uh, oh, well, I guess I got 15 minutes or so. And let's see. Um, OK, maybe I shouldn't stop. <laughs> OK, uh, now let me continue with this. Uh, so, uh, so next is a further property. of uh, integral varifold. So that's integral varifold is the one that uh, I was, I'm most interested in. OK, um, there's a very nice special property about this class of integral varifold, okay, with that multiplicity being integer function. Now, uh, so here's a theorem due to Allard. This is one of the most important result in this uh, varifold. Um, so that's about the compactness of this integral varifold. That's very uh, inter nice, very nice result. So we suppose we have a, a sequence of integral varifold. Okay. Uh, K pro is not good. Um, J, which is integral varifold. So suppose they satisfy um, the following: uh, the lim su lim inf so lim inf of um, the mass uh, let's see you tilde so it, it only needs to be bounded locally so the first variation measure total variation measure. This is bounded for any locally, uh, any compactly incru uh, uh, included uh, u tilde. So for any uh, u tilde, OK? So, um, So let, let, I'll explain uh, in terms of uh, sort of a smooth object now, but let me just finish writing. Then uh, the, the conclusion is that then there exists a subsequence, subsequence uh, v j i maybe, and a limit uh, v, which is uh, integral variable. 
such that uh, uh, this uh, b is a limit of uh, this uh, subsequence. Now, um, this convergence is in the sense of measure as a variable. Okay, so uh, this. So maybe I, I should I, I should say that this last part is really uh, for any phi, which is a, a continuous function on this GKU, uh, b of uh, i, no j i of phi converge to b of phi. Okay, that's that's what it means. Okay. It's not, not as a uh, measure on uh, Rn, but uh, on, on this GKU. OK, so this is a very nice theorem. Uh, well, maybe just to emphasize what this condition means. Uh, so this is, so first of all, this is a sequence of integral variables. So it's more like generalized surface, k-dimensional surface. Now, what is this? This is, uh, first things, this means the area is uniformly bounded locally, because this, this is a, this is like a k-dimensional area. So this, what, is, thi what this is, is the, um, the bound on the first variation. Uh, so uh, in a very rough sense, it's, it's a L1 bound of mean curvature, okay? Because the, this corresponds roughly to mean curvature, okay? So it, when you have these two things bounded locally, then uh, there exists a subsequence and the Actually, the existence of the converging subsequence is, is sort of trivial because we, we, for Radon measure, whenever you have a bounded Radon measure, there's a weak compactness theorem for Radon measures, so there is a subsequence. That's no problem. But the important point is the limit is actually integral variable. That's, that's, a, that's the most important point. See, uh, So let me explain uh, what it means. Even for smooth case, it's in fact a very non-trivial. Okay, so let me explain this. So, uh, so the remark is, it's even non-trivial, non-trivial result for smooth. Um, uh, uh, for sequence of, maybe I should say, for sequence of uh, smooth surfaces. Okay, so that's a very important point. You see, suppose you have a, a sequence of k-dimensional surfaces, which is you know, smooth, as smooth as you want. Okay, so suppose you have mj, the k-dimensional surfaces, okay, smooth. Now, what, what is this condition? This condition means that um, the, the, notice that the, uh, so bj in this case is, you think this as mj, okay? The, the one that corresponds to this, this uh, smooth guy. Uh, now, what is this guy, this bj, weight measure, u tilde? You see, the weight measure for this guy is nothing but just a k-dimensional surface measure of this M, mj. So this is uh, uh, just the HK of MJ intersecting with U tilde, okay? So that's just the k-dimensional area of this surface. And uh, uh, assuming that this guy has no boundary inside of U, uh, then uh, uh, this uh, first variation, as I said, is, uh, so note that the first variation of this uh, mj of g, say, or maybe I, I can probably just say, well, maybe uh, u tilde uh, is, is nothing but just minus of h of mj. Uh, well, actually, maybe, uh, maybe I should look up even total variation already at this point. Total variation of this uh, first variation is nothing but, in fact, mean curvature uh, integrated over mj, okay? That's, well, the first variation, you can just check that this, this total variation is, is just L1 of mean curvature. Uh, this is also bounded, 
Okay, so uh, I erased it already, but so the, the assumption we are talking about is this quantity area and also L1 of mean curvature is bounded uniformly. Then there is a sequence such that this MJI converts to uh, some integral variable B. Okay? But now integral means really it's like a surface with integer multiplicity, right? As th that's a, the uh, definition of the um, uh, integral variable. So this is, um, you know, V is nothing but just uh, theta times uh, some, well, I, I would say that uh, maybe uh, I should have introduced some notation for this, but maybe the integer value theta times some uh, uh, k rectifiable set, country k rectifiable set. Okay, that's where this, this theta is integer valued almost everywhere. So it's really like k dimensional object. But this is not completely, you know, this is, not tr uh, this is uh, very non trivial if you think about it. If you have a sequence of smooth k dimensional surface, you know, if you have no control of some reasonable things, you can end up having some totally crazy things in the limit a priori. Okay? But the, the, what he, this is claiming is if you have an area bound, L1 bound of the mean curvature, then the limit is nice. You know, it's a k dimensional object. Okay, so that's, that's the alas uh, the compactness theorem of uh, 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 integ integral varifold. Okay, so, okay, um, that's, so uh, this I, I, I think I may use it later uh, if I have time. And uh, the other, the last things I'd like to explain is, uh, is so-called the perpendicularity theorem of uh, Bracke. So that's all I need to excuse. So uh, the, the, other, the next theorem I'd like to use later, this, this one I use a lot, in fact, later. That's called uh, Bracke. OK, so um, now suppose also uh, V is the um, integral varifold, k-dimensional integral varifold. With um, locally bounded first variation, okay, so uh, lo locally bounded first variation, and also, uh, uh, and also, this first variation is absolutely continuous with respect to weight measure, okay? So that means uh, you have a generalized mean curvature vector, okay? As a radon nicotine derivative. Then uh, the following is true. Then, uh, this one's very uh, non-trivial. Uh, then for, for, um, B almost everywhere. Uh, this mean generalized mean curvature vector is actually perpendicular to the tangent space, uh, where uh, V is. Um, this M is uh, the one that uh, you see. This is integral variable, so. Uh, you see V is represented like this, okay? And uh, where, okay, uh, and uh, TXM is uh, approximate tangent space. So um, it's a little bit abstract, perhaps, but um, this is a um, very nice, interesting theorem. You see, um, if we assume that um, this, this first variation is bounded and absolutely continuous, by radon nicotine theorem, we have this object H. But a priori, you know, H, is, H could be 
anything <laughs> from this definition. But what this is claiming is it's actually perpendicular to the tangent space almost everywhere. But you know, um, if you define the mean curvature vector, usually what you do is you, you, you actually uh, define what the mean curvature is as a scalar valued thing, and then multiply the normal vector. So of course it's normal. Right, by definition. But here it's different. You see, you, H is defined as a radon nicotin derivative of the first variation, but still you end up having this perpendicularity almost everywhere. Okay? So uh, that's, that's very non-trivial results. Uh, it's proved in the Brackett's uh, book uh, from 78. And that's actually one of the readable part of, the <laughs> of his book, I would say. <laughs> and that's a, uh, it's, it's actually, uh, you can uh, check it's, it's true. And in fact, it's, it's, even more, it's, it's even better than this, in fact. And in fact, you don't even need this property, in fact. Uh, maybe as a remark, I say, I, I don't want to confuse you, so I, I don't want to write the totally uh, most uh, general statement. But as a remark, I just say in a passing that uh, remark is Remark is actually this this absolute continuity even not necessary uh, is not needed. In fact, uh, that is uh, even if you don't have this, you can actually decompose this as um, absolutely continuous part, absolutely continuous part, and singular part by radon nicotin derivative, uh, radon nicotin theorem. Um, you know, if it's uh, absolutely continuous, then you don't have this guy, singular part. Uh, but if you don't have that, you have singular part, usually, by radon nicotine. So if, if you don't have this, you still have this, radon nicotine derivative. You can define the me generalized mean curvature from this guy, absolutely continuous part, as a um, H, E, if you like like this. And this guy is actually a, a perpendicular almost everywhere, like the way I just wrote there. So it's actually a very, very general statement, in fact. Any co-dimension, you know, no restriction on the dimension, any dimension. So um, it's actually uh, quite an amazing theorem, I would say. And that uh, this is true. Um, if, since it's an integral bifold, uh, uh, the other remark is that uh, if it's a rectifiable bifold, this property is not true. If D is just rectifiable bifold, then not true in general. Well, the rectifiable varifold is the one that theta uh, is not necessarily integer valued. So it could be continuously changing on M. Then the point is the first variation, you see, if you have a variation of theta, maybe it's actually better to, you see, if you do first variation, maybe the, the um, first variation may, so suppose that you have an M like this. And suppose theta is changing along this m, OK? If it's, say, increasing this way, then actually, the, if, you do, if you, you look at the first variation vector, it may be looking like this direction, possibly. Okay? Because you see, the weight on m is different than if you look at the first variation. Maybe the, um, the uh, first variation may not be orthogonal to this tangent space. Okay? So, that this being integer value is actually important to, to get this perpendicularity. Okay. Yes? What is the, what is the meaning of this theta? Is theta is a so-called multiplicity. So it's a, you can think as a weight function on, on M. So more like a density function. So yeah. Is, is, is the integral value state what? Well, integer means that, say, you know, if it's one, it's just just one, you know, one sheet. Yeah. Well, I would say that if theta is, uh, theta is more like a number of sheet that you are f folding somehow. 
Yeah, for example, the idea is that if the two surfaces become together, you, ca you count it as two. That's, that's sort of the idea. So we, we, if theta is two, you know, you, like two sheets of papers is together. So the theta is like number of sheets that you, you have on, on, the, on the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if theta is uh, not integer valued, that means, you see, you have this sort of continuously varying sort of number of sheets. I mean, that doesn't make sh s meaning as a number of sheets, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, some of maybe say that uh, the tangential part of G doesn't matter for the first variation. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, tangential variation does not yeah, occur. Yeah. Uh, but I'm confused because uh, I forgot, but uh, the definition of divergence of G it's so if you multiply the projection matrix, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah, you have a. So, so that's that's uh, so that seems like a, the, the tangential part matters, but here only normal. I mean, that's some computation. Yes, tangential part kind of do uh, sort of be become uh, unimportant after integration by parts. I would say, yeah. Somehow, uh, <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> explain it, but yeah. So the, the here, you see, the, the thing is, you don't have a boundary. So, OK, so I'm skipping a couple of things. Um, there is a boundary. Mm -hmm. This makes sense, because uh, right. the potential uh, deformation may be cancelled out. <laughs> right, if you don't have boundary, yeah. Well, if you have a boundary, uh, you see uh, the first variation has sort of singularity yeah. in the direction of the boundary. So, yeah. Right, right, it does. In fact, actually, here, assuming this, roughly speaking, is corresponds to not having a boundary. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, this condition really, in some sense, means there's no boundary. Because if you do, uh, you have some kind of, you see, um, OK, so maybe uh, the last remark is that, uh, OK, so if this is not needed, so that's this situation like that. So I'm kind of you know, trying to be very simple. So <laughs> I'm skipping a lot of things. But so suppose that m has a boundary. OK, so if suppose that this is not empty. Then um, well, what we have now in this case uh, so this is going to be different. This case is you have this minus of h dot g, but also you have this boundary contribution uh, where this uh, nu is uh, sort of co-normal. Um, k minus 1, this case. Okay. So if you have a boundary, you have this extra term. Notice that this guy is not absolutely continuous with respect to k-dimensional measure. This guy lives in k minus one-dimensional measure. So even if k-dimensional measure is zero, this is not zero. Okay? So that's a situation where you don't have the absolute continuity. Okay? So this part becomes a singular first variation, in fact. But I, I'm kind of s trying to skip this. Because in, in my talk, uh, well, I what I'm going to talk about corresponds to the situation where you don't have a boundary, more or less. So to minimize the presentation, <laughs> you see, I'm crushing, I'm really condensing <laughs> a lot of things so that it's you know, presentable within two hours. <laughs> so anyway, so that, that, that may cause some confusion. But actually, yeah, so this condition really is corresponding to the uh, without boundary. So most likely, your theta, this, this multiplicity function, stays constant, in fact. Because if it does change from 1 to 2, for example, somewhere, that introduces a boundary. Okay. So in some sense, uh, ha having this condition is really kind of saying that you don't have any boundary. And a theta may stay constant, more or less, you know, very roughly speaking. 
Okay, I think uh, today I finish here. Thank you. Thank you.